In terms of the small islands, their very existence is at risk. As the Prime Minister noted, the same is true for vaccine equity in many respects. Many small island developing states have succeeded in preventing widespread transmission of COVID-19 in their communities. But the pandemic has hit you hard in other ways, such as declining revenues from tourism, which is affecting your economy significantly, compounded by more transmissible variants like Delta, which is quickly becoming the dominant strain in many countries, we're in a very dangerous period of this pandemic. In those countries with low vaccination coverage, terrible scenes of hospitals overflowing are again becoming the norm. But no country on earth is out of the woods yet. The Delta variant is dangerous and is continuing to evolve and mutate, which requires constant evaluation and careful adjustment of the public health response. Delta has been detected in at least 98 countries and is spreading quickly in countries with low and high vaccination coverage. There are essentially two ways for countries to push back against new surges. Public health and social measures like strong surveillance, strategic testing, early case detection, isolation and clinical care remain critical, as well as masking physical distance, avoiding crowded places, and keeping indoor areas well ventilated are the basis for the response. And second, the world must equitably share protective gear, oxygen, tests, treatments, and vaccines. I have urged leaders across the world to work together to ensure that by this time next year, 70% of all people in every country are vaccinated. This is the best way to slow the pandemic, save lives, drive a truly global economic recovery, and along the way, prevent further dangerous variants from getting the upper hand. By the end of this September, we're calling on leaders to vaccinate at least 10% of people in all countries. This would protect health workers and those at most risk, effectively ending the acute stage of the pandemic and saving a lot of lives. It's a challenge, but we know it's possible because already 3 billion vaccines have been distributed. It is within the collective power of a few countries to step up and ensure that vaccines are shared, manufacturing is increased, and that the funds are in, places, in place to purchase the tools needed. There is now some sharing of vaccines happening, but it's still only a trickle, which is being outpaced by variants. In those countries whose hospitals are filling up, they need vaccines and other health tools right now. New manufacturing hubs, including for mRNA vaccines, are being developed, but this could be accelerated by companies openly sharing technology and know-how. In particular, I urge those companies like BioNTech, Pfizer, and Moderna to share their know-how so that we can speed up the development of new production. The sooner we start building more vaccine hubs and upping global vaccine capacity, the sooner we can diminish deadly surges. This week, the leaders of IMF, World Bank, WTO, and WHO met to look at practical ways to track, coordinate, and advance the delivery of COVID-19 vaccines to low- and middle-income countries. Collectively, we also made several asks to the G20 to accelerate global efforts to reach our vaccine targets. Finally, some countries, regions, have launched so-called vaccine certificates, and I want to make it very clear that it's important that these do not lead to discrimination against those people and countries 
that have either a lack of vaccines or certain type of vaccine. As you know, WHO issues emergency use listings for vaccines based on a stringent, stringent assessment of safety and efficacy. And we expect all countries to recognize and accept those vaccines that WHO has approved. Thank you.